Hey, what's up, everyone? It's George from Crypto Potato, and today we're joined by Vijay Pravin, the CEO and founder of Bitscrunch, a blockchain analytics company with a focus on NFT statistics. Vijay is a veteran data scientist with previous experience in companies such as Siemens and Volkswagen. In today's episode, we chat about the current state of the NFT market. Were we in a bubble? And if so, did it pop already? We also talk about what percentage of the NFT trading volume is subjected to wash trading and whether or not the prices of NFTs are correlated to the prices of the broader cryptocurrency market. As always, if you enjoy our content, please like this video and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell so you don't miss on any new episodes coming in the future. So, hey Vijay, and thank you so much for agreeing to do this, man. It's nice to have you on. Thanks a lot, Jaj. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure talking to you and, and the amazing Crypto Potato community. Uh, so looking forward to this great uh, session. Yeah. So we're going to chat about a lot of things, including what you guys do, NFTs, goblins and whatnot. But before that, let me let me take you back a little bit. So can you please let us know how did you get into crypto? When was it when you got to crypto? Mm -hmm. yeah. So like, like every other founder in this space, I, I got in as an investor, like a retail investor, right. like, like most of the founders. Uh, I used to invest a little bit of uh, savings on, on Ethereum, Litecoin, and another classic altcoins uh, that, that used to be in early 2018s, 19s. And uh, when, when the whole NFT world picked up, that is when uh, I realized that this is an amazing uh, thing that is evolving. And uh, I somehow believe that NFTs has a great potential. And as a data professional, I, I just thought I should unleash uh, what is behind those NFTs. And that is where we, we got together as founders. Uh, and yeah, now, now you see it's just slowly evolving in this space. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? What is it that uh, Bitscrunch do? Yes. So Bitscrunch is basically a blockchain analytics company that is focusing on securing the NFT ecosystem. So by that, I mean, we tackle some of the key issues like wash trading, uh, where, where people used to flip NFTs for higher prices to inflate the prices. And also they, uh, they obtain the marketplace rewards. So that is one of the key aspects that we tackle. And then we also look into the fair price estimation of NFTs, which we believe can unleash a lot of uh, potential in this space. Because nowadays people are using NFTs to give, uh, to give loans and to, to get loans uh, to, to make it liquid. And uh, these are things that we are solving. And then I'm glad to say that we are backed by some of the amazing investors in this space. Uh, Animoca Brands led the last round. We are backed by Coinbase Ventures, who are the well-known investors in this space. And alongside Coinbase, we have Polygon and Crypto.com Capital, who are just very few names that yeah. we have on the cap table. So uh, we are based in Munich, spread across Munich, Belgium, Canada, and India. Uh, so we are already a team of 30, a growing, fastest growing team. And then this NFT space, uh, which is doing a fair bit of work in this space. So yeah. And you recently also partnered with MasterCard, right? Yes, that's that's one of the biggest achievements that we have did till date. Uh, because MasterCard is such a huge name, right? I mean, right. the names that I just name dropped, uh, like Animoca Brands or be it Coinbase, Polygon, Crypto.com. These are Web3 native names. These are right. crypto native names. But MasterCard is something special. Uh, it's, it's very close to my heart uh, since I started this journey because it's literally everywhere. It is in your pocket. It is in my pocket. And uh, this is definitely going to shape up the whole Web3 space. In, in general, the NFT space, because MasterCard is trying to make sure that their customers are buying legitimate NFTs. And that is something that BitScrunch is, is helping them out. And in a way that we are very glad to, to, to collaborate with such a stalwart, such a leader in this industry, who has always 
put security as one of their uh, forefront reasons uh, in the in the web two space. And now with them coming into the web three space, uh, focusing again on security is going to change a lot of things uh, in in the NFT market. And speaking of NFTs, do you think what we saw was a huge bubble, or do you think that maybe NFTs are definitely here to stay? Of course, one doesn't exclude the other, but like let's 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 break down what happened with NFTs in twenty twenty one. We saw that. Like these projects, like the board apes, uh, the penguins, and whatnot, they all exploded into 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 the stratosphere with some mm. crazy valuations. And then, when the market crashed a few weeks back, uh, perhaps maybe most of the of this year, a lot of these projects also lost a lot of their value. So, do you think there was some sort of a bubble stasis in this? And if so, did it pop? Uh, I, I would say it's, it's more of a market condition, right? I mean, you you would have probably seen a lot more beer and bull markets than me because you are longer than uh, me in this space because I just started crypto just a, a year or a two years back uh, full time. Previously, right. I was with Siemens and Volkswagen who are the two biggest German entities in this uh, part of the world. So uh, if you ask me, the, the overall market is down. It's not just crypto. Uh, the S&P is down. The general share market is down. Nasdaq is down. Uh, you, right. you name it. You just name right. it. Every single market is down. Even the shares of Amazon, the likes of Tesla is down. So what do you expect from something that is like a baby? Like NFTs are, uh, I would compare it to the baby, which is still crawling, still crawling and trying to climb up. And uh, I would expect some of the junk projects to, to get lost over this bubble, over this uh, market situation, because uh, it's, 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 in a way, it's in a way good and bad. I mean, bad for those who developed, uh, who put in their heart and soul into this project. But at the same time, it also cleans up the space. It cleans up uh, collections, which are not uh, going to stay for a long run. But on the other hand, if you look at uh, projects like BAYC, MAYC, CryptoPunks, MeBits and others, those have dropped uh, in value like every other shares, but uh, they are not likely going to blow out uh, from this space. And with Meta, Metaverse and uh, play to earn games, move, move to in game games, all, all set to revolutionize the world, I don't think uh, that's going to drastically... Uh, change the complex of uh, the NFT space. It, it is a glitch. It is obviously a glitch that we are facing right now. But uh, to me, I personally have a very strong conviction towards NFTs because what I see in terms of arts or games are more like uh, a teaser of NFTs. But in the future, bills payable could be an NFT, bills receivable could be an NFT, uh, whatnot. I mean, you, you just name anything. Any physical asset can be picked to an NFT. So the dimensions, the possibilities are much more than, than we think of. So I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to blow away. It's going to stay. <laughs> yeah, so you mentioned that there are a lot of potential use cases for NFT. So in your personal opinion, um, what do you think would be the best use case for NFT? Uh, so, uh, use cases, I mean, use cases of NFTs are plenty, right? I mean, look at uh, BAYCs and MAYCs. They are becoming like the Bitcoins versus altcoins category when it comes to NFTs. They are setting a, a brand for themselves, setting a, a class apart where they differentiate themselves with, with a lot of events, a lot of uh, uh, IP that they, they give out for uh, restaurants, right? I mean, there is a uh, board ape themed restaurant that, that that gets opened up in US uh, just as recently. So you, you you can kind of expect a lot more uh, similar things from uh, the top NFT collections like like CryptoPunks. Uh, look at look at CryptoPunks. It it started in way back in 2017. Uh, it it has probably seen a lot more uh, uh, bear and bull market than any other crypt collection, right? So obviously you can expect a lot more you know, 
things that we we can re relate uh, to the physical world like like uh, apparel clothing uh, fashion retail industry um, gaming industry uh, event event category a lot of football clubs basketball clubs they 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 might partner with uh, yoga labs for for some things and yoga labs is also producing a ape film right, uh, right. something something like a netflix of web to world so the potential is huge um, you, you can expect uh, several different things that that can, that can amaze us in the next year uh, because i'm just waiting for the next cycle <laughs> right. so so you think the the nft market is also cyclic cyclic cyclical like uh, the broader crypto market because what we've seen so far for example when i started back in 2017 so there was this huge explosive bull market right we saw bitcoin in 20k and so far and so forth ethereum hitting 1.4 ripple trading over three dollars and uh, then everything crashed right and everyone was talking that crypto moves in cycles and bitcoin's halving acts like the catalyst for for the next cycle and next the next bitcoin halving is in two years i guess so do you think do you think nfts will correlate in a in a sense with the broader crypto market uh, as an nft analytics and forensics company we looked at uh, some of the correlations at, at with uh, we haven't published the data yet but we see some correlation definitely uh, especially with mayc mutant ape yeah. uh, yeah, collection we see a lot of collection along with Ethereum and other crypto values. So there are uh, um, collections like art blocks where everybody can mint NFTs. I mean, they have more than 200,000 collections in my opinion, I, I guess. So right. they are not uh, not correlating with, with uh, the uh, Ethereum and other general coins out here, but we do see correlation, especially with MAYC, and a couple of other collections. Uh, you can expect us to publish those results in some time, but uh, for sure, uh, you can expect the correlation, but uh, I mean, as you know, the market is pretty early. As I said, it's, it's like a baby that is crawling. So you, we cannot make a conclusive evidence, conclusive decision at this point in time, uh, because it's, right. it's still too early. Uh, we need to see how many collections survive this cycle and climb up to the aces in the next cycle. And that is when uh, people will realize uh, the true potential of NFTs because right. the junkies will be removed out of this space and the true ones, the true ones in the sense with huge potential, huge utility that gives back to the community will uh, is, is gonna stay. Uh, earlier today, earlier uh, in, in our podcast, you mentioned that uh, we see a lot of uh, wash trading in NFTs, right? So can you please explain to those who don't know what wash trading is? Mm -hmm. So wash trading is a phenomenon which, which is used by some, some of the smart scammers, I would say, in this space where uh, they, they inflate the price of NFTs or obtain marketplace rewards. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say George uh, May uh, can can create multiple metamask or any wallets right he can right. create any addresses uh, what george can do is he can buy an nft flip it to himself flip it to the other metamask address just to inflate its price from let's say 0.1 ethereum to 1 ethereum or 2 ethereum just over a matter of few days or, or even few hours right that is totally possible but why does george do that Two reasons. One is to inflate the price of NFTs. Let's say if you mint something for $100 and if you pump it to $1,000, it looks lucrative, right? right. Let's say Vijay, Vijay comes in, uh, opens Rarible or opens your any marketplace. He sees George, uh, George's NFTs that are raising from 0.1 to 1 Ethereum to 2 Ethereum after right. every refresh or after every hour. And then I get lured into it. I'm, I, as a person, I, I don't know what's going behind the NFT data. I mean, there are people who, who could spot that with eyes, right. but there are definitely a lot of people who are just FOMOing in, uh, into this space right now. 
So Vijay buys George's NFTs that was minted at 0.1 Ethereum. Uh, Vijay gets it for two Ethereum. And that is that is one of the reasons why George right. does this in the first place. And the second reason is the marketplace rewards. It's a marketplaces like looks rare or rareable or some of the other marketplaces, they reward guys who sell or trade NFTs frequently. Right. So Im imagine the same case. George has sold an NFT that is worth 0.1 Ethereum to 2 Ethereum to Vijay. And at the same time, uh, you can expect some rewards from Rarible or uh, looks rare for the activity that you did, which is right. not at all a fair activity. So this is a basic preliminary wash trading method that I just said. But we at Bitscrunch, we have identified more than 12 patterns of wash trading so far, right? From simple patterns to complex patterns. Right. And I would also imagine that uh, wash trading would help if, let's say, the creators of a malicious collection want to prop up the volume, which will bring it further on the watch lists of different uh, analytics providers that track volumes and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. I mean, George, uh, Crypto Potato and Bitscrunch, we can join hands and create a collection. We can deploy 20 resources. We can hand them over 20 laptops and make right. them do wash trades uh, in a room of uh, 20 people. Just make it look zigzag or any pattern that they can follow. And ultimately, uh, they can able to pump the floor price from 10 Ethereum to 100 Ethereum in a right. matter of days. Right. And this is what is happening in some of the cases not in all cases but that's that's why we are here we are cleaning up the space and with bit scrunch with unleash nfts uh, people are gonna be much more smarter than those malicious traders is there is there a number that you can share with us for example like if the, if, mm -hmm. if we take like the broader nft trading volume and mm -hmm. x what percent of X is being portrayed right now? I mean, it would it would create a, a huge ripple effect in this space if I share the number uh -huh. right away. But uh, to 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 tell you something, it is much more than one third of the volume that is trading currently. One uh, so third of the volume. I don't know. One third. Ah, one third. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, that's huge. Yeah, 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 that is quite huge, but. Uh, there are quite a number of marketplaces, malicious marketplaces, right. which which I, I don't want to call out call out yeah, loud yeah. in this session. Uh, but if you take out those malicious uh, NFT marketplaces out there, then it, the numbers looks good. So right. it is just with the, the advent of uh, some of the right. malicious players, we... numbers are pulled back. Right. And how do we prevent this from happening? Apart, like the, the only thing I can think of is just bringing more visibility and saying like, mm -hmm. this is currently being wash traded. Mm -hmm. Because you can't actually like, can can you uh, uh, prohibit someone from buying and selling NFTs all by himself? I mean, uh, no, I mean um, we aim to provide more knowledge, more knowledge transfer to people, right? Right. So uh, why do people use coin market cap? I mean, if you, uh, if you put up a survey uh, globally, Coin market cap or things like Coin Gecko uh, is used widely just to keep track of the assets, keep track of what's uh, what's the market situation, what's the market cap, what's the volume looking like, and this is something that we want to replicate to the NFT space, right? And not not just the NFT market cap, but we want to uh, give out forensics information like wash trades and uh, so many other malicious activities and we also uh, are aiming to provide the fair price estimation of nfts which is also going to help right i mean right now the market is relying on floor price right. in my opinion floor price isn't the right way to look at things uh, but with tools like bit and and the evolving market we, we can end up seeing a better new space once this market is uh, over and what's the difference between a fair price and a floor price? 
uh, floor price, like I said, uh, crypto potato and bit strange. We can do a collection. We can pump the floor right. price from from. It's, the, it's the least table. amount of money someone is willing to pay for, like for a, exactly. a part of this. Project. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So we we can always do that. We can pump the price of hundred hundred NFTs right. in a collection just just to uh, make it lucrative overnight. But fair price is something which takes wash trading and sixty other. Key performance indicators into account in order to look for a fair price of an NFT. Right. Okay. So we, we check for the moment you link your wallet with an NFT, we check for George's uh, previous history. We look at your NFT history. Are you a new NFT purchaser? Are you a, uh, an avid purchaser with a lot of NFTs? Uh, how long was your previous NFT was put on sale on Rarible or OpenSea? Uh, what's the price that you listed your uh, Right. Uh, NFT and and so many. So there are so many factors that we are at, uh, contributing to the fair price, and yeah, that that's also the business essence, which I, right. I don't want to reveal all along. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, right now in NFTs, there is a very very clear trend that uh, PFP collections like the board apes, like punks, like you name it, like OK Bears on Solana and whatnot. They dominate the market, right? Like hmm. almost all of the top collections, all of them are focused on profile pictures and creating this sort of digital identity. I would say, like someone wearing his uh, their uh, profile picture on Twitter, and people associating this profile with this particular NFT. Do you hmm. think? Do you think this will? keep being the most predominant case or because like why i'm asking because there are a lot of projects that are gaining steam but i just can't see can't see them being so uh dominant in let's say five years from now right because there are a lot of pro especially right now there are a lot of projects let's say let's the, the hottest trend i think right now is those goblins like goblin town wtf right yeah, and these yeah. things sell for like 10k plus it's crazy they they, they reach like nine ETH, and it was a free mint which is mm. absolutely crazy to me mm. putting the art aside like the visuals aside i just can't seem to wrap my head around how this will will persist for the next five years right because i, I just don't see it i mean so my um, question, my question is, do you think we will see more utility driven NFTs? Like I buy this thing, but it also brings me something else apart from me being able to put it on, on my Twitter profile or on any other social media, be it centralized or decentralized. Right? I mean, uh, right now, um, market is niche, market is new. Uh, that is one of the reasons why you get to see these profile picture kind of things out there. And it's also about the backers, right? I mean, look at uh, BAYC, MAYC, crypto yeah. brands, backers, uh, Animoca brands, and a few others are packing them. A16Z, which is one of the prominent right. crypto fund, and also a typical Web2 fund, is backing them. So when, when big players back something, it always hits the ceiling. And what happened with the Goblins is totally unexpected. Yeah. And uh, even I am looking forward to uh, their long-term stay. How is it? Is it gonna uh, go through all these uh, bear and bull markets uh, over the next few years? But uh, you should always link things with community, right? Uh, it's, it's all about community at this point. But as the community gets along nicely, when they have a few NFTs to showcase, they'll turn towards utility in the long run. Let's say if, if, if there is an NFT out there, will there be any book, any event ticket, any uh, clothing, yeah. any apparel linked yeah. to that NFTs, any gaming assets, any in-game assets. So that is definitely on cards. But like I said, people are right now, uh, most of the people, they are FOMOing in and some of them are looking at the backers of the project. I mean, it, it happens. Uh, to the crypto projects as well, right? General sure. crypto projects. Yeah. So people with good backers tend to stay in the long run. Whereas on the other hand, when projects are not backed well, they tend to um, 
be suffocated right i mean they they tend to struggle at the beginning but once they come out with flying colors they are going to stay so it's all right. about the effects uh, the efforts that they put in and uh, yeah i'm i'm i am also eagerly looking forward to how this space is going to shape up in the next years and do you think ethereum will remain the predominant chain where like all the action happens because we see some others emerge like solana yeah. um ethereum uh, hands down one of the best chains i mean uh, we we don't know what is what it is going to look like after the merge after uh, what eth 2.0 happens but right now eth has been one of the best uh, tried and tested chain out there it is much more stable and and secure when you compare it with other chains um but uh, give give others some time i mean there are chains like solano uh, solana which is halted once in a while uh, they are emerging they are uh, slowly coming up into the market and there is polkadot avalanche polygon so so many others competing uh, but hands down eth has, has been the way has been the torch bearer has shown us the way how things work but yeah uh, we'll have to wait and watch <laughs> how yeah. it works out uh and earlier you mentioned web3 can you define what web3 is for you because i hear this thrown a lot and it seems that a lot of people have different definitions and understandings of web3 so what is web3 for you how do you get it? i mean there are there are so many uh, you might have gone through so many uh, web3 definitions from various founders and various people out there in this space i would like to highlight a key point from uh, the recent report from a16z uh, the recent web3 report with uh, nfts with uh, web3 uh, assets each and every individual has gained so much in value when you compare it with the creators in the web2 space so for instance youtube provides a very meager amount to the creators back and uh, facebook provides uh, even uh, sort of a penny to the creators back but web3 has been rewarding the creators a lot when you compare the whole volume that has happened in this space to the number of creators or uh, collectors in this space this has been a, a boon to the market boon to the creators i would say it's, it's uh, it has a lot of uh, time to mature but in a way uh, it's good to see that um, the creators are rewarded not the companies not the companies who are accumulating value who are becoming trillion dollar companies uh, over the years where creators like you and me are also rewarded it's it's good to see that change and let's look at it from a different perspective and if web3 puts the power back to the user right so but the problem that many people have outlined so far is that web3 is largely institutionalized in the sense that there are so many vcs that are backing all the big projects like i'm not going to name them because everybody knows knows who these uh, vcs are uh, is this a problem what do you think uh, i mean even if you look at the web2 companies uh, you name any big company aren't there any backing yeah for sure so for sure uh, twitter is backed by some of the amazing leaders in this space uh, tesla is backed by some of the amazing leaders so backing isn't a problem but then we are not exactly in web3 as of now we are somewhere in between web 2.5 i would right. call uh, where most of the things most of the assets are still centralized uh, but um, yes there there will be a lot of benefits for those backers for those institutional backers uh but from the hind side it's 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 in a way good for the users right end users so uh, like like you and me we were not rewarded a lot for our youtube videos and uh, facebook posts and twitter uh, engagements from the traditional web2 companies but this might change with uh, how web3 is going to work right even if it is funded i'm happy that uh, some of the funds are getting back to me and in some or other ways either through tokens or nfts or what what not so okay. it's, it's 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 a different ball game 
and we need to still wait and see how this evolves. And are you a proponent of the metaverse? Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of metaverse. Uh, in fact, I have a few NFTs uh, with regards to NF uh, metaverses. Uh, but yeah, we, um, we, we again have to see if uh, that is going to be the rush, adrenaline rush for the Gen Z, Generation Z that is coming up. Uh, because with pandemic situation, with pandemic times, uh, metaverse has seemed to be a good reality, good reality check for most of the people, most of the Gen Z. But with worlds opening up, uh, with, with uh, most of the countries lifting off the restrictions, I, I'm, I'm eager to see how metaverses are uh, making sure that the people are sticking to the AR, VR setup. Do you see it as some sort of a logical extension to our existing social interactions? Like, because we are right now, we are talking digitally, like you're in Germany, I'm in Bulgaria, and, and we're talking as if we're right next to each other. I consider this to be part of the metaverse experience in general, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, the, the same session would have happened face to face in, in a few years back, right? A few years ago, if you want to uh, do a session for your YouTube viewers, you might have invited that person to your offices right. or you might have gone there with, with all the setup. But with modern tools like Zoom, Google Meet and Microsoft Teams and plenty of other uh, even similar Web3 tools are there, it has become a lot more easier. Uh, myself connecting with somebody from Bulgaria yeah. in just a matter of seconds, right? So this could well be an extension to the metaverse uh, up next, but uh, we need a stable environment for that. I mean, Zoom right. isn't a hit, uh, my Google Meet isn't a hit overnight. These right. evolved over the last two years, three years time, and the metaverse needs that time to, to evolve, to be stable enough uh, in order to have a fruitful conversation. Right. Okay, so can you please tell me what can we expect going forward from BitScrunch? Apart from those reports that I'm personally very much looking forward to. <laughs> so you, you can expect us uh, to educate a lot of people in this NFT space. We would like to enable a lot of people you know, who can uh, make careful and considerate uh, NFT decisions, NFT purchase decisions. So we would like to enable people which NFTs to buy and most importantly, which not to buy. So uh, along this journey, uh, we would like to employ a lot of people across the globe. I mean, we are a global team right now. We sit in Germany, Belgium, Canada, and India. So I'd like to uh, employ a lot of nationalities, give them opportunity to, to unleash their talents in Web3 and provide an amazing uh, learning experience and, and growth option at BitScrunch. Well, it's been a blast, Vijay. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, George. Likewise, same. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. It never felt like a session. I, I never felt that this is an AMA. <laughs> it's it's more point. like a, it, it, it is more like a candid, friendly conversation with you. Yeah, and that's the yeah. Point, yeah.